developed shortly before the Naboo crisis as an affordable patrol vessel aimed at buyers who found the typical starfighter too short-legged for their needs, but could not justify the expense of a proper gunship or corvette. The Fire Spray class was a failed experiment by Kua Drive Yards intended to be the first in a supposed new market of discount patrol ships. Among the many failings of the class were an unorthodox and space-wasting hull geometry which required a gimmicky moving cockpit, a design feature which was never justified by the company, light weapons loadout, and engines which were designed to be reliable at the expense of performance and fuel efficiency. It is not easy to see, then, why the design would have such a limited production run. Though one ship's infamous use by the Fett family of bounty hunters is somewhat hard to justify given the many failings of the design, which will be discussed. The fire spray measured in its flying configuration 7.8 meters long, 21.3 meters wide, and 21.5 meters tall. As designed, the ship was equipped with two chin-mounted twin light-repeating blasters and an ordnance launcher. The vessel was built with a Class III hyperdrive, sufficient for the ship's role as a humble patrol ship, and shields which were unremarkable, but reasonable. The short range of most starfighters in the decades prior to the outbreak of the Clone Wars, and the high cost of full-sized warships such as gunships, corvettes, and patrol boats, led executives at Kuat Drive Yards to believe that there was a market for a ship which would boast starfighter-level armament, but increased range on the order of a corvette. Such a ship being seen as an attractive offering for many poor sectors in the expansion region, as well as the mid and outer rim regions, which were typically scarce on cash and plentiful in terms of threats. If costs could be kept low enough to make the planned ship only slightly more expensive to purchase than a flight of three contemporary fighters, such as the Z series of income, or the ever-popular cloak shape, then such a vessel was thought to represent a viable entry into the military market of the time. Thus, plans would be put into place and a prototype built. It being fairly early in the ship's development that the odd rotating cockpit arrangement would be added, possibly in an effort to give potential pilots a better view of any landing pads on approach, though this justification seems a bit of a stretch. Regardless, it was included, and developed at great expense, by Kuat technicians who may have developed other projects in the meantime and spent that money more wisely. Aside from over a dozen prototypes, the total production of Fire Spray class patrol ships would amount to a paltry half dozen, all delivered to a Republic prison colony on Ouvu 4. After this, no further members of the class would be produced, and the design would be largely forgotten. The reasons for this very limited production run are in hindsight, quite obvious. When the Fire Spray project began, most starfighters lacked hyperdrives. With the few models which did boast such devices being very large and clunky machines as a sacrifice. However, by the time that production began of the model, this had changed, with a new line of compact and most importantly, affordable hyperdrive equipped starfighters entering service around the time of the Naboo crisis which would render the fire spray largely pointless. With the ship being armed only as well as a normal starfighter, but also presenting a much bigger and slower target, which would make her an easy victim for these new starfighters. The handful of production fire sprays would be used above Ouvo 4 until the colony was abandoned shortly before the Clone Wars, several ships being lost in accidents prior to this. Meanwhile, the prototypes still at Kuat itself would be used as targets, tugs, and test beds for several years before being themselves scrapped in the early days of the Empire, as Kuat no longer had a use for the ships in even the most esoteric of roles. Today, there is believed to be but a single example of the type remaining in flying condition anywhere in the galaxy this ship being operated in a heavily modified form by the bounty hunter Boba Fett 
it being unknown presently how the bounty hunter's father, Django, originally obtained the ship, though it was known that it is some years before the outbreak of the Clone Wars. While virtually unknown and only ever having mediocre performance at best, the fire spray represents a unique experiment by a company better known for producing safe designs virtually guaranteed to see some success. And while it's true that the design was ultimately a major failure for Kuat, which only ever saw extremely limited sales, the ship is still an interesting design, which deserves recognition for what it is. An overblown starfighter with a very fancy cockpit, which swivels, which makes it extra special. Speaking of extra special, you will notice in the description of this video, as it is in all my videos, a uh, link to my Patreon page. It is via Patreons that I am able to afford the slight upgrade here and there. It's not like I have a massive amount of Patreons, but the ones I have are appreciated. Um, this is largely a hobby project, this channel, so it's not like I am uh, demanding Patreons to live. So if you can support the channel with Patreon, like a dollar a month gets you some perks, um, gets you an opinion on whether or not these videos stay, or these, not the videos stay, that, that's keeping up, but I mean the sort of long, drawn-out endings, like we're at a, two minutes right now for a kind of unscripted ending, as is. Uh, link for that down below, thanks to Patreons, I'm able to afford bits on occasion, like better microphones, things like that. Um, always supported. That's like the third time. Not supported, appreciated. That's like the third time I've said they're appreciated. So you know they're definitely appreciated. Anyway, I'm going to go now before the Patreons I do have hear this and um, uh, decide, no, they're done. Um, actually, I've probably gone on too long already. Oh, look, I've... No.